Welcome to our viewers around the world. Today we focus on malaria, a deadly parasitic disease transmitted by infected mosquitoes. Our documentary is entitled Malaria in Focus, the battle against a global health threat. Malaria remains a leading cause of death, especially in children under five and poses severe health, social and economic burdens on affected regions. By raising awareness, we aim to inform, educate, and inspire action to combat this preventable and treatable disease. If you find value in this, please like, share, and subscribe to support our work and help amplify these vital messages. Malaria remains a global challenge with high morbidity and mortality in Africa, especially Nigeria and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Lessons learned from the US, which eradicated malaria in 1951 through aggressive mosquito control, must be implemented. Advances like artemisin, a Nobel-winning anti-malarial therapy, have driven progress, yet more needs to be done. To eradicate malaria, Nigeria and Africa must adopt a combination of mosquito-aggressive surveillance and eradication bole kaja, no grief for mosquito strategies, utilize community health inspectors, insecticide-treated nets, chemo prevention, vaccines, novel therapies, and the World Health Organization's E2025 goals. Malaria is a parasitic, life-threatening disease caused by plasmodium parasites, which is commonly transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected female Anopheles mosquito. The main parasites are Plasmodium species, e.g. Plasmodium falciparum, Plasmodium vivax, Plasmodium malariae, Plasmodium oval, and Plasmodium nolesi. P. falciparum is the most dangerous and commonest cause of severe cases and fatalities due to malaria. The other ways that infection by malaria parasite can occur include from mother to child during pregnancy, from organ transplant, and from blood transfusion. Malaria has been with humanity for a very long time. On your screen, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in August 2008 published in the Journal of Emerging Infectious Diseases a letter from Andreas Nerlich and co-authors titled Plasmodium falciparum in Ancient Egypt. The authors reported that ancient DNA of Plasmodium falciparum was identified in the tissue of Egyptian mummies from approximately 4,000 years ago. The Egyptian materials derived from the pre-dynastic to early dynastic site of Abydos, from 3,500 to 2,800 BC, a Middle Kingdom tomb in Thebes West, from 2050 to 1650 BC, and various tomb complexes in the Thebes West, which were built and used between the Middle and New Kingdom until the Late Period, from 2050 to 500 BC. They concluded that our study unambiguously identified P. falciparum ancient DNA in Egyptian mummy samples, thereby proving a specific infection by falciparum malaria in ancient Egypt. Charles-Louis Alphonse Laveran was a French army doctor who won the Nobel Prize in 1907 for the discovery that the malaria parasite was the cause of malaria. He debunked the idea that was in wide circulation at the time that malaria was due to evil spirits or bad air. Mosquitoes cause a lot of diseases, some of which are listed on your screen. Of these, malaria transmitted by the female Anopheles mosquito is the commonest of these diseases. The Anopheles mosquito also causes lymphatic filariasis. The Aedes mosquito transmits chikungunya, dengue, lymphatic filariasis, rift valley fever, yellow fever and Zika fever. The Culex mosquito transmits Japanese encephalitis, lymphatic filariasis and West Nile fever. Malaria is the third leading cause of death due to communicable diseases worldwide in children under five years of age, after pneumonia and diarrheal diseases. Approximately half a million children die yearly from malaria infection. 
This is approximately 1,300 children per day. In adults and more commonly in children, the malaria parasite, primarily falciparum, can infect the brain leading to cerebral malaria, which has a very high mortality rate of up to 50% if not quickly diagnosed and treated. On your screen is a colour-coded map of the share of the world population with malaria. It is a disease with a global footprint, but endemic in most parts of Africa, South America, Middle East and Asia. With global climate change, malaria may spread and be endemic in other parts of the world. The global distribution of malaria cases based on the World Health Organization Malaria Report of 2023 is on your screen. Nigeria accounts for close to 27% of cases followed by Democratic Republic of the Congo with 12.3% of the cases and Uganda with 5.1% of cases. Worldwide, a majority of deaths from malaria are in under five-year-olds. This has unfortunately remained so for a long period of time. The overwhelming majority of deaths from malaria, 90%, occur in Africa as depicted in the graph on your screen. Here is a pie diagram of malaria deaths by country with Nigeria having the highest percentage of deaths at 31%, followed by the Democratic Republic of the Congo at almost 12%. Most of the deaths occur in West Africa, Central and East Africa, Substantive progress cannot be made in reducing death from malaria without reducing deaths from malaria in Nigeria. Nigeria has made some progress in reducing the burden of malaria. On your screen is a share of the population with malaria as of 2000 in Nigeria, the African region and the world. Almost a third of the population in Nigeria had malaria infection almost a quarter in the African region and 3% of the population worldwide. By 2021 in Nigeria, the share of the population with malaria was approximately 20%, reduced by approximately 12% compared to 2000. In the Africa region, approximately, it was now 13%, reduced by approximately 10% compared to 2000. The reduction in the share of the population with malaria was as a result of improved sanitation practices, improvement in health care and chemoprophylaxis, such as the use of pyrimethamine, also known as Sunday Sunday medicine. While progress has been made in Nigeria, a lot more work still needs to be done in reducing the share of the population with malaria. Let us focus on death rate from malaria. As depicted on your screen, the death rate from malaria in 2000 per 100,000 people were approximately 151, 98 and 14 in Nigeria, the African region and worldwide respectively. By the year 2021, the death rate from malaria had reduced in Nigeria to 112.2, an absolute decrease by approximately 31% compared to 2000. In the African region, it was approximately 63, an absolute reduction by approximately 35%, and 10.5 in the world, an absolute reduction by approximately 4%. These reductions in death can be attributed to the same factors mentioned previously. Progress is still too slow in reducing the death rate from malaria in Nigeria. Too many black children, especially under five years of age, are dying from a preventable disease. A lot more work still needs to be done to eradicate the disease not only from Nigeria but the African continent. So what can you do to protect yourself from malaria infection? It is important that when travel is contemplated by a child or adult to a region where malaria is endemic, that appropriate anti-malarial prophylaxis under the care of an appropriately trained healthcare provider is initiated before, during and after leaving the malarious region. The United States eradicated malaria in 1951. On your screen is a list of countries that have eliminated malaria or are working on eliminating malaria. 
Countries are placed on the year that they attained three consecutive years of zero indigenous cases. Blue represents countries with zero indigenous cases, but not yet certified. Green represents countries that have been certified as malaria-free, with the year of certification in parentheses. The Maldives was certified in 2015, however it was already malaria-free before 2000 and thus is not listed here. To further lower malaria infection rates in Nigeria, Africa and worldwide, the use of insecticide-treated mosquito nets, ITNs, remains a proven cost-effective strategy. ITNs retain effectiveness after multiple washes, reducing child malaria deaths by about 20%, and curbing mosquito populations when widely used. The World Health Organization now recommends universal ITN coverage in malarious areas, extending beyond pregnant women and children under five. These nets are primarily distributed through mass campaigns every three years. However, challenges persist as ITN usage varies by country. Increased educational programs and community awareness are essential to encourage consistent and proper use of these nets, ensuring their maximum impact in reducing malaria morbidity and mortality globally. According to the World Health Organization, manufacturers' delivery data from 2004 to 2022 show that more than 2.9 billion insecticide-treated nets were supplied globally with 2.5 billion, 86%, supplied to sub-Saharan Africa. There are now new types of insecticide-treated nets that last for years instead of 6 to 12 months. These long-lasting insecticide-treated nets also contain agents that mosquitoes are not resistant to. Other interventions that reduce the burden of malaria infection are indoor residual spraying of insecticides and the treatment of malaria patients with standard antimalarial therapy per medical guidance. The use of artemisin-based therapy discovered by Tu Yuyu, a Chinese researcher, has changed the treatment landscape of malaria and for which she was awarded a Nobel Prize in 2015. Other strategies include anti-malarial prophylaxis under the guidance of a healthcare provider and community mosquito control programs reminiscent of the Garki Research Project in northern Nigeria from 1969 to 1976. Other public health strategies include adequate water drainage to prevent stagnant pools of water, thereby preventing breeding of mosquitoes. Another strategy is the E2025 initiative. The Malaria Eliminating Countries for 2025, E2025 initiative, launched in 2021, succeeded the E2020 initiative. E2025 includes 25 countries listed on your screen westward from Mexico to eastward, Vanuatu. The selection of the E2025 countries was based on criteria such as having a government-endorsed elimination plan, meeting a defined threshold of malaria case reductions in recent years, meeting predefined program requirements and expert opinions, including from the World Health Organization. What are the key challenges faced in the treatment and eradication of malaria? The current global challenge with the treatment of malaria is development of Plasmodium falciparum species that are resistant to current treatment regimens. This can be addressed by ensuring that healthcare providers are up to date with current treatment modalities for the treatment of malaria and the development of new therapies that the parasite is not resistant to. Research is ongoing in the use of other modalities for treatment such as monoclonal antibodies, vaccines and gene editing technologies and long-acting medications. Details of these are beyond the scope of this educational documentary. A useful website in the United States is that of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, cdc.gov.
An ongoing challenge is the low percentage of children under five in malaria endemic regions who receive anti-malarial drugs when they have a fever. This issue is particularly pronounced in areas with high malaria morbidity and mortality, such as West, East and Central Africa, where data on treatment coverage remains sparse. Efforts should focus on educating healthcare providers about the early use of appropriate anti-malarial drugs. Additionally, Limited access to new therapies in rural and resource-limited settings must be addressed. To address several of these challenges, in 2005, President George W. Bush launched the President's Malaria Initiative, also known as PMI, to reduce malaria deaths by 50% in 15 high-burden countries in sub-Saharan Africa by expanding proven and highly effective malaria prevention and treatment measures. The United States remains the largest donor in the global fight against malaria. Through the President's Malaria Initiative, investments have saved lives and driven lasting change in countries bearing over 90% of the world's malaria burden. Since 2006, the US has invested up to $10 billion to support partner nations in combating this disease. What must Nigeria and Africa do to win the war against the mosquito and malaria? First, it must declare a war against the mosquito reminiscent of the brute force war using aggressive surveillance and eradication of mosquitoes that led to the eradication of malaria from the United States in 1951. Secondly, it must be through Bole Kaja, no grief for mosquito strategy, much like the US strategy. Third, the Department of Public Health must be revived and a dedicated office for malaria control established in each state and local government. Fourth, community health inspectors, also known as Wole Wole, must be employed to ensure aggressive surveillance and eradication of mosquitoes. Fifth, partnering with organisations that fight malaria, some of which are listed on your screen. Additional strategies include the establishment of an African task force for mosquito surveillance and eradication, the establishment of a regional task force in West, Central and East Africa. Finally, the expertise of academic institutions in Africa must be leveraged in the war against the mosquito. In summary, Significant progress has been made in the last two decades in reducing morbidity and mortality from malaria infection. Preventative, cost-effective measures such as the use of insecticide-treated nets have proven effective in reducing the burden of disease. New investigational agents are currently being evaluated to provide better prevention and treatment options. Additionally, new therapies are being developed including vaccines and long-acting drugs, to combat resistance and enhance malaria control efforts globally. Humanity is fighting back and aggressively too. The learning objectives of this documentary have been met. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This has been a presentation of Apomulero Media LLC. By subscribing, you ensure you don't miss out on our future videos that delve into fascinating topics from around the world.